You know what? You know, Mario, you can stop right now and a lot of people will get saved, and you're right. Right now, if I were to stop preaching, it's not any credit to my eloquence, it's the power of God that's in this room. Let me tell you something. What you're feeling is not only the conviction of the Holy Spirit, what you are feeling is a new era in American history. Because God is pouring out His Spirit on the United States right now. Yeah. Manuel said that he heard a sermon I preached. That was over almost 30 years ago. And it, it, in fact, it was over 30 years ago. And I was talking about four words. Unthankful, unholy, unforgiving, ungodly. It's found in 2 Timothy chapter 3. And what Manuel was referring to is where it says of what mankind will be in the last days. And it didn't blame weather. It didn't blame uh, droughts. It blamed man. It said the last days will be dangerous because of what man's condition will be. Then it says there would be a new condition. Jesus talked about it in the chapter 24 of Matthew when he said the love of mankind would grow cold the natural love of a mom for their child would die people would lose something and when Paul said they'd be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God that they would have all of these moral issues that we're watching right now America is going out of its way to make sure that children get to see adult perversion. The Bible said this would be the end result. A force would take over them. So it says ungodly, unthankful, unforgiving. It means that they've lost the power to feel those things. Lost the power. It's a judgment on a soul that suddenly, let's take the word forgiveness. You think that means, well, a guy is unable to forgive. It means that the wound of a past hurt never heals. It means that the body's natural ability to close up a wound and make it go away is gone. It's gone from your life. It's gone from your spirit. You're still frozen in that moment of divorce that you went through 20 years ago. The hurt never went away. The ability to feel this I'm getting over. People are not getting over things anymore because of the judgment of God on the behavior of people. It says they will be ungrateful. That's the other one. You think that means you didn't leave a very good tip. Doesn't mean that at all. It means that beauty no longer affects you. The Bible describes a man like that in the 8th chapter of Matthew, where it said that he wouldn't wear clothes and he lived in a tomb and he couldn't be away from corpses. He never felt right among the living, only among the dead. And he would wail at night. And the Bible said that this man was exceedingly fierce. You know that word, that original Aramaic word for fierce, only appears twice in the New Testament. Once in Matthew 8, describing a man who was demon-possessed. And second, where Paul said, know this, that in the last days, fierce times will come. Times that are demonically possessed. Times where natural affection will go away. Times where one day you'll say, I'm only going to try a little bit of fentanyl and your life has been stolen. There's never been a time 
where a small mistake has reaped such a high consequence. But here's what happens when you bow your knee to Jesus Christ and you call him Lord and you call him King and you say yes to him and no to what's going on around you. Here's what happens. The power to forgive will get in you. Suddenly, all of the dead feelings come back to life. The Bible says you become as a child to enter the kingdom of God. We watch the innocence of children. I have a granddaughter. I'm hopelessly in love with my granddaughter. I thought, you know what a pastor told me? He said, grandchildren are God's reward for not killing your kids. And, and she's come into my life and everything she does, I'm just beside myself. But I'm watching and, and I feel this horrendous protectiveness over my granddaughter Lydia. And I'm thinking of her and I'm going, I don't want her to go into this world. I want to look at you a moment. Look at me. When you were 10 years old, sir, when you were 10 years old, you had an idea of a man and life and what you would do. What would that 10 year old think of what you've become? What would that 10 year old girl that you once were think of the woman you are today? And this is what the Bible says, because men will be fierce, driven by devils, overwhelmed by wickedness, unable by their own power to feel the beauty of a sunset or to love and be committed and make a marriage work and a life work or to get over emotions. I have never seen such a strange hypocrisy as the American life because we claim to be enlightened. We talk about how inclusive we are, how open-minded we are. If we're so enlightened, why are three quarters of us on prescription medication? Why can't we live without a pill if our life is working? Here's what I'm telling you. The devil wants to do this to everyone in this room. Keep you going in a lie. Keep you, give you just enough of a crumb of satisfaction so that you'll keep down the path you're going, losing your humanity every day, justifying more perversion, more addiction, more depression, more anxiety, more anger. Say, Mario, if you stop right now, a lot of people will respond. But you don't understand. I'm just, I'm not just after a big response. I'm after a deep response. I don't want you to come up here and, and take Jesus like you took that last drug. I don't want you to treat Jesus like you did the last relationship. I don't want him to be a fad. I don't want him to be something. You have got to be there. Maybe, Mario, you need to go on a little bit longer. Maybe you need to preach a little bit longer until you feel that it's going to be Jesus or nothing. I'm going to give everything to him. I'm not going to go up there and get a half cure. I'm going to go up there and say, Jesus, it's you and you alone. 